This is a 1920 Briggs & Stratton buckboard flyer. They uh, originally bought the, the rights for the engine, Briggs & Stratton did from the Smith Motor Wheel Company, which is an English manufacturer. And they improved upon it. This is basically the starting of motors for Briggs & Stratton. This is a 1920 model. It uh, has a spring on it here. You can see I'm just turning the wheel. It'll automatically recenter. It is a road legal, surprisingly, car for back then. I have not licensed it for the road because if I did and try to take it out, I'd probably get run over. But they advertised up to 80 miles per gallon with this. It, uh, these are, this is the original bucket seats in it. The uh, engine on this is a two horsepower. It is exactly the same as they would use on their bicycles. The only difference between this engine and the bicycles is it has a hand crank for starting and a fan on the side for cooling as the passengers would block the air from getting to the motor to keep it cool for going down the road. Once the uh, engine is running, you drop it down to the ground slowly like this and away you go. The motor is always running. So neutral is just to lift it up off the ground when you, to come to a stop. I asked people where, where are the brakes on this car if they could find them. They're hard to locate. Here's the pedal and what you got to do is you watch the rear fenders on this. When you hit the pedal, the rear fenders slide back. There's a metal skid plate on both sides inside here so it rubs right on the tire for stopping. It does approximately 25 miles an hour. It doesn't seem very fast, but at that speed when you're sitting that low to the ground, you seem like you're just flying. There is no suspension. It's just the flexing of the wood for the suspension going down the road. The motor, besides being a two horsepower, the motor wheel itself is hooked directly to the cam. So it's going half speed of the engine. To start it, you flood the carburetor just a little bit and you just hold down the compression release. And that's how you, how you would start the car. For stopping on the steering column is this lever here which is the compression release also. You just pull it down, it releases the compression so it just dies from that. There, it's a magneto ignition just like a modern engine, lawnmower engine you could say. There's only a dozen, maybe 15 left of these we know of out there, but they're so small. They could be hidden away easy. In fact, this one here was found above a dental office in the Twin Cities area.